It's cool to say on the beach, I saw the tide come in. There was that sandbar that I walked across and then like about 20 minutes later it was almost uh, under. I tried to get a crab. I found that it's whole and I saw it pop out quickly and I tried to dig it out. I, I I try to like coax him out by like covering the entrance. And, like I figure like at some point he might be it's gonna have to come out. He waited me out. He won. He probably has like an underground tunnel. No, I put a stick down there. It ends. I don't know. It was a very flimsy stick, but it did actually. It's kind of cool. We'll wait another minute just in case someone connects in time. Did you commit any uh, other form of entertainment rather than running? I swim oh. and bike. Hmm. And in, I, in the pool or in the open ocean? I didn't swim in the ocean yet. I want to. Um, Aaron. Landon and I, I tomorrow, we're, after your um, chair session, we're going to go kayak. Oh, that, that's great plan. And if anyone is listening to us, they will be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me. My girlfriend's not too impressed with me right now. Why? It's our one year today. Oh, whatever. <laughs> and it also dropped four inches of snow up, back up there. Well, what are you supposed to do about that? Though? We're down here relaxing on beaches and stuff, and they go through a winter storm. It's perfect. Okay, well, thanks for <laughs> for for uh, coming and joining it in spite of um, hard throw. <laughs> um, this will run out of batteries quick, so I, I will try to squeeze. So okay. that you, um, last, this is standard thing, and uh, um, we are trying to get through the party folk. And you, you have heard the uh, professor Vince Arsitz, who gave a very nice overview from bird's eye. Uh, but we need to go into tiny details of uh, party folk equations so that we. It's, there is no reason to go anywhere else before we get this little little things. So uh, the concepts are your favorite Slater determinant, and we need the variational uh, theorem. Uh, we need Coulomb and exchange, and then after we wrap it up into a concept of atomic molecular orbitals going to Slater determinant, we will write down the algorithm how the, the code is, is, is working. So you, we are skipping everything related to nuclear degrees of freedom, we have only, only electronic degrees of freedom, uh, this, this three terms in Hamiltonian. The electrons interact with each other and therefore they take different orbitals. And um, the goal is to project multi-electron problems onto several one-electron problems. And this is done by making uh, another your favorite equation, average of uh, quantum average of multi-electron over the electron number two of them, whereas all but one electrons. And we are going to do it. Then one is getting equations for, like in two electrons, equation for first electron and second electron. But right now it is not yet sol uh, solvable because we do not know how to. We do not have algorithm for solving it. We need something for this uh, interaction uh, terms. And the variational principle tells that <coughs> if you already know perfect wave function with minimal energy, and then we try to vary it a little bit, the energy will always increase. Um, and this principle is fundamental background for search for self-consistent uh, algorithm to solve uh, particular equations. So this is something we will come back uh, on next week, 
so the atomic orbitals this chi looks like x centered on different ions with different coefficients c form molecular orbitals right and molecular orbitals composed uh, with the slater determinant make overall big wave function that no one draws it. it's multi-dimensional it's just a concept right atomic expansion coefficient molecular orbital overall wave function and the variation principle of slightly varying orbitals or wave function until you get the right one is applied by optimizing those uh, C coefficients. So we need equations that will help us to update these coefficients until we are happy with them. Some, um, it is not for pen and paper, it's for computers, for uh, programmer on the bathtub, same, same, same style. And uh, there will be equation very similar to Schrodinger equation with the letter F instead of H for uh, glorify form. So last thing we overviewed before departing from class last time was that if we practice Slater determinant, right, if our wave function is Slater determinant, and we want to practice a way to find total energy, we put operator in between and Brian Cat uh, on the left and right of the wave function. And due to anti-symmetry of, of Slater determinant, there is an artifact. It is, uh, I was going to collect your signatures to, uh, for, for a surprise that everyone believes that electrons repel each other, that electron electron interaction gives positive contribution to energy because they have the same charge. But due to anti symmetry, there, there are terms with negative charge. So, sort of electron, electron interaction that stabilizes the system. Negative. It is a big surprise. It's, uh, and it is why Hartree Fock is better than pure Hartree. So, um, I don't know, I, I had some comments, but we can go. So, it was, was done, what was done before, what, what we are doing now. I'm going to show the same two terms that we overviewed. One is, um, I just want you to surprise you, therefore I will show it in, in a second later. And there will be pictures, so that you do not uh, feel bored. So, there are two types of contributions to Coulomb interaction. One repelling, another attracting. And we do have equations for each of those. But those equations are so boring for everyone that uh, uh, smart people who have not it find a way to represent equations in form of pictures and got a Nobel Prize for it. So, if you hate equations, do not worry. You, Nobel Prize holders hate them as well. Okay, so it is most intense uh, slide of today. Those are equations which are boring, and those are pictures that are much better. So, um, here we have the repulsion of, of two electrons. So, it is at site one orbital 1, at site 2, orbital 2, and here on the right side also, position 1, uh, orbital 1, position 2, electron 2, sine plus, so repel. Now, we will look later on in a second, how we can interpret. Electrons are very rarely seated in, in some locations, sometimes most frequently they move. And if electron is moving and there are no interactions, it will move on a straight line. Right? But here is an abstraction. If it feels, it, it is not feeling second electron all the time. It just randomly feels it for just one short interval in time and then forgets about it. So it scatters. One electron scatters from another one. So it, it goes up, bumps into second electron and, and goes to different direction. Reasonable. Right? But the second electron also bumps into first one and goes into different directions. So they just come in and out. Very much. Repulsion. If like two billiard balls collide, they will run into different. So the lines are freely distributed, freely moving electrons, and this wavy line is their bumping, their interaction. 
basically Feynman got Nobel Prize for, for things like this. Here, everything is natural. We, we, we can follow it, right? But how do we interpret the second term, which, we, which has negative thing? So we know if you follow equation, position one, orbital one, position two, orbital two, and after interaction, position one, orbital two, position two, orbital one. So the electrons swap their badges after interaction. And it, instead of bumping and going away, they are kind of going through each other. So the number one becomes n number two. Number two becomes number one. But it is still, it is because of this wavy line which corresponds to Coulomb interaction. So the first one is uh, true Coulomb. We keep the old uh, name Coulomb, and second one is exchange because they swap the pages. Right? And if you write equations, you just swap uh, indices or positions and put number minus. And if you do these Feynman diagrams, you just make them to, to cross and go go. So, from point of view of theoretical physicist, uh, all universe corresponds of just such interactions. And, we just draw diagrams and tell here is the equation of everything. So, what are we going to do? Right now, we have very strong baggage. We have all, all components, and we need to slowly go to equations that we will be able to solve. Okay? So, we need to uh, re 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 equation one electron equation which takes into account influence with another electrons. And we need to remember, uh, we need a procedure that makes a hybrid operator. That is not an operator in the second electron, but still operator for the, for the first electron. So we are, we are going to practice it, and we are going to practice it towards our Feynman diagrams, towards the Coulomb and exchange. So. so um, Well, forget it. I'll, I'll show next time. This is what, yeah. This is what I like. So, this is um, same equation as we had before for for Coulomb. So, but. I am intentionally removing one electron away. Okay, erase last 30 seconds. I, I need to go pr to prove the slide. So, if you want to find total energy, we need to integrate over all electrons, first and second. And uh, so we, we need to have this uh, Coulomb interaction and then four orbitals, two before, two after. And we can symbolically do it in the, in the uh, first we integrate over second electron and call it letter J. And then we uh, multiply it by first electron and integrate it over one. And as a result, we get not an operator, but a number, total contribution from Coulomb energy. I will erase those wrong 30 seconds, if I have time. So, this is number. But we know operator, we know number, but we, now we need a hybrid. A thing that is an operator that acts not on two electrons, but only on the first. So, if we scroll back and speak not about the last thing over here, But previous, previous step, J with head. So we perform integration over second electron, and then it will, this construction will be an operator in respect to the first electron. So if you plug it into here, it will be the standard way of finding expectation values. So 
let's focus on on this construction and, and uh, what what is the properties and how can we use it and if you if you want to do same construction for exchange we just swap swap indices and put minus minus some same term. so this full boom operator for one electron carries information about distribution of second electron in average way but it acts on the one electron number one so operator acts on the wave function on the or on the orbital so operator here acts on the on the wave function we know that this uh, overall plumb interaction should be described by this Feynman diagram but how do we implement into this diagram the integration over position of second electron means that integration instead of being having specific lines we just take all possible positions and all possible velocities and an average cloud representing second electron will be like a wall from from which first electron is scattering Okay, so it is structureless wall that provides scattering of, of the first electron away from, 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 from here. The repulsion means it bumps and scatters away. So this is Coulomb one electron operator for half the pop. And then we can practice the same uh, thing for exchange. See the indices here as well. And now we again will draw a box that uh, represent average cloud of electron number two but something crazy and uh, counterintuitive happens so like i'm coming to the mirror bumping into it and at the same instant i'm coming out but my face is changed so it was electron number one it bumps into here and then it comes out as electron number two so they, they're swapping. We, we do not need to imagine it. It's crazy. It's better just to follow equations. But if if we miss this term, then most of molecules will become unstable. They will self-explode. So this is a reason why molecules are stable, why there is a uh, stabilization factor, why the additional contribution to total energy that is negative. Draw a box and it bumps and changes identity. Focus, focus. And uh, for Coulomb, there is a convention to use the letter J and for exchange the letter K. I disagree with these notations, but it is what is used in literature. Wait, for Coulomb, you use what? Huh? What, what letter do you use for it? Um, for, for Coulomb, for the standard repulsive thing, it is J. Okay. And for the attractive craziest thing it is k almost done we will be done in a record short time <laughs> miss, miss our meeting you <laughs> <laughs> recognize it as well nope. <laughs> so um, if we want to be masters of this uh, notations I do not want to be one, but uh, just in case, if you want to play with this uh, sort of equations every day, there is a third way. First way, pure equation. Second way is the pure pictures. And the second way is abbreviated, shorthand notations, because which uh, we will have integration variables the same, first and second, but the Coulomb interaction in the denominator doesn't change. We need only the indices of orbitals. And if we have indices of orbitals more than two, like some Latin alphabet, R, S, T, U, we can put it in into the just brackets. And some literature, maybe we will not face this literature in our life, but, but just in case, maybe here in the conference you'll see and some people believe that everyone accepts this notation from kindergarten. So this uh, 
round bracket, round bracket, and vertical line in the middle, it means this uh, four uh, orbitals or two electron integrals. Okay, this, this, this column. And uh, if you have the indices coinciding before, we are finishing very soon. This, le this lecture. Take a seat. So, if the indices uh, coincide, like before vertical line the same and after vertical line the same, it will correspond to repulsive column. And if they are different before and after, it will get same. <laughs> so, what, what we will be doing next time, um, we will take this. Uh, positive repulsive colon and negative uh, exchange into one electron operator and uh, recast it in the basis of specific orbitals and then just set up the algorithm how it is solved. Thank you for joining. <laughs> <laughs> and the meeting number 13 is done. Anyone online wants to ask questions? Okay, if no one is here, the meeting is dismissed. The meeting is dismissed. Angela, you can... Uh, Stop, stop the uh, equipment. We are going to disconnect. Okay. Thank you. I have none.